Hello and welcome. In this video I would like to talk about how do you prepare to go live on Prana. Um, it is today Monday. Uh, Friday I'm starting the Prana retreat with Amudra and Manor. So that's only four days to go. So it's getting really exciting and uh, yeah, I'm well in my preparation now. So yeah, I want to talk to you about yeah, how do you prepare for this. Um, there's two aspects, one is physical and one is mentally. So in general, I'll first talk generically and then I'll go more into my individual journey. So physically, you want to change your diet uh, slowly over some time before you go in to make the transition. So the generic guideline would be to go, for, if you're a meat eater, then first you would go vegetarian, then you would go vegan, uh, then you, the last phase you switch to fruits and juices. Um, and then the last step is to go make the transition to live on prana. Um, so that's a sort of generic path. Um, for me, um, I was already vegetarian, so that is easy. I didn't make, have to make that first step. In fact, I always said, you know, I'm 90% vegan in terms of I had already, uh, I was not drinking any dairy anymore. The only sort of uh, animal products I would use would be sometimes I would like to have scrambled egg on toast or uh, cheese with a salad or something like this. Um, so I wasn't consuming very much dairy at all. Um, but my journey actually started, and this is what happens, my journey started, the transition started the moment I signed up to do this retreat, which was, um, well, I think in seriousness, I think May, June. Um, then your mind starts kicking in like oh my god am i really not going to eat anymore and you know all your fears are starting to come up your ego goes wild because i think this is one of the most fundamental belief systems that we have that you must eat if you don't eat you're going to die so and with this you're going to break right through that and for me one of the things of doing this is it, this is such a fundamental um belief that if i can break that then this is possible then anything is possible and that freedom is what i want to experience um but you know you're uh, there's one part of me saying yeah i want this but then you know years and years of my whole life all this belief system of you must eat otherwise you're going to die all that comes to the surface and then for me what plays as well is um i don't live alone my daughter who's 16 lives with me and um, she is obviously going to continue eating normally. You know, I'm not forcing her to go <laughs> live on prana. Um, so I'll be in a situation where I'll have to cook for her. Now, sometimes she'll make her own meal, but let's say that I'm going to cook for her. I'm going to sit next to her when she's going to be eating and I'll be having nothing. So that's going to make it harder on that aspect. So I knew I had to, in order to uh, do this successfully, uh, it being coming out of the retreat and then being able to sustain it, I'm going to really need to work on breaking the mental patterns around food. Um, and it's typical for me, like when we watch something on Netflix in the evening together, you know, we, I want a snack. Uh, that's such an inbuilt kind of mechanism. Um, toast of peanut butter in the evening. Mm, yum. So, you know, so it's giving those things up. Um, so I, I started early on with a series of sort of experiments to see what it would be like if I'm not eating meals with her. So I did um, a number of mm, detoxes, cleanses, fasts, whatever you want to call that. So I did three days just drinking uh, the, well, the master cleanse, water with lemon juice and cayenne pepper. I did that for three days. One, to cleanse the body and get that ready. Um, second one was to see what it's like if she's eating normally and I'm just drinking um, and that was going quite okay um, and what I sort of discovered it's really about the mindset and in a way I suppose it's a bit similar like somebody who um, uh, an alcoholic who, who stops drinking it's easier not to drink at all than to drink half a glass because then people go like, oh, come on, have a little bit more. So when I communicate, no, I'm not eating at all because I'm fasting, then, you know, people respect this. Um, so I did this. Uh, another thing I did was uh, three days uh, only eating grapes. 
because I'd heard from some people that grapes, that something in grapes that really go deeply inside your organs, really cleanse them and bring the mucus out. Uh, and I really experienced that that was working for me in that way. And again, that was in those three days. One of the days, a friend of mine had a party on the beach and it was all this beautiful vegan food. And I was there like, mm, I'm only eating grapes. And again, it's, you know, to have that mindset to really you know, not give in, just, just stick with the grapes. And that felt like a little, little victory to be able to do that. Um, so I sort of, this was all mental preparation, yeah, also working on the body, but for me it was more about working, preparing myself mentally for little test runs, if you like, to see um, the future of her eating her thing and I'm eating, well, nothing. Um, so then my preparation really for the, the upcoming retreat started four weeks before when we were uh, advised to go vegan. So. I had this long series of celebrations of, oh, my last scrambled egg, and I was really enjoying it, and my last ice cream, and uh, things like this. Um, and I started eating lighter. So introducing quite quickly, I, I went to eating soups for dinners, and sometimes a normal meal, but eating lightly. Getting my your body used to lighter food. Um, then... About two weeks before I really, um, I, I had my uh, last meal, I had a, my last supper, as I called it. So we had a celebration with some friends and uh, had a nice big meal. And then, so from two weeks before, I stopped eating normal meals and I just went to soups. So I would have fruit in the morning, I would have like a shake uh, for lunch or sometimes soup for lunch. Uh, I wouldn't have a normal dinner anymore. And actually that felt really, that was really easy for me. Uh, and I loved it. I loved, I felt really light. And what I've noticed is that in this time, uh, normally I would have some spots on my face, but now it's like, look, I'm totally clean. There's no spot at all. So my body is already cleaning and it's showing. So that's really nice. Um, and now I'm in the last week. In the last week, we only eat fruit or fruit juices. Um, this I'm finding much harder, funny enough. Uh, but it, because I'm, I was very happily settled in my rhythm. And now I'm changing that again. And uh, just the drinking. So, um, you know, I feel good. I feel, you know, my body is strong enough. It's no problem. But um, it's just a change of the diet pattern that is a bit difficult for me. And as the retreat is coming closer, um, you know, I do get fear come up. Uh, that started Saturday evening, Sunday morning. I did have some fear like, oh my gosh, I'm really going to do this. I'm not going to eat anymore. And it's, it seems so crazy. And um, yeah, this is, you know, my mind sometimes goes a bit nuts. Uh, and I think that's normal. So I'm not worried about it. But, you know, I want to be real. I don't want to sit here and go like, yeah, everything's fantastic. No, you know, it does bring up fears. Um, but I know I've personally met four people that have done this, who are living this way and who are absolutely fine. So on that level, I know that everything is going to be fine. Uh, we'll be with a group of 16 people. We've got two facilitators, and more uh, Abu Dhabi and Manor, um, who are very experienced and I know them and I trust them. So that's, you know, I will going to be in, in good hands. Um, so for anybody out there, you know, who's getting worried about this, you know, I'm not doing this on my own. And I really wouldn't recommend anybody to just do this on your own. You, I think this is something you really need guidance and support to get you through this. So, so yeah, so that's going to be the journey. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. It must sell. It really feels a bit like jumping off a cliff. You know, I've seen other people sort of land on the other side and they're okay, but it's still such a crazy concept the idea that I wouldn't eat anymore um, yeah it, it's just I can't even imagine what it's going to be like uh, so I'm just gonna make the jump and see what happens and uh, yeah see you on the other side um, I'll probably post something before I go but in principle during the retreat we're gonna have uh, no phones no books no music just completely 
cut off from the world, to really concentrate on this process, no distractions, face everything that anything that comes up, we're going to face it there. Uh, so that will be very interesting. Um, however, I did discuss that I do want to make a few videos um, to journey my progress throughout the retreat. So how that's going to pan out, I don't know. Whether I will post them while I'm there, I don't know. It might be that I keep that separate and just post them wh when I come out. Uh, but I think it will be interesting to share the journey to give you reality, feel of, of what it's like to go through this. Um, you know, and there will be ups and downs and yeah, that's to be expected. So uh, we will see. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks everybody for all the support that I'm getting, which is really amazing. And yeah, I'll speak soon. Bye.